And welcome back, everybody, to a different type of episode podcast this week. We decided to ask the CBC members who have joined the channel down in that little join membership button for some Q&A for this week's episode, since it is still like the fallout of everything that was happening with Spider-Man and everything. We're like, okay, it's going to be a little bit of a week where we can just kind of see what people want us to talk about. It separates it from some other content. So as always, um, just quickly... There is exclusive content on there, you know, audio commentaries, uh, a bunch of discussions, uh, pretty much whatever you will, video game discussions. Um, John Q&A. John Q&As. <laughs> there's plenty of those. Sometimes I have to drop those twice a day because of him. So, um, you know, make sure if you see John around, thank him for that. And um, as always, uh, this podcast, since it is Q&A, it'll probably be a little bit on the shorter side. Then again, I say that every week, and it's always like 45 to 50 minutes, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how that shakes out. But um, as always, your host, Armin, and Arminis at Comic Book Cast, here with Mitch. What's up? You can find me at Mitch692. Also, Tristan. Hey, guys. You can catch me at Is J Chance. And Shay. Hey, guys. You can find me at Mache1602. So with all that in mind, we're just going to get right into the first. <sighs> Sony will obviously try to do the live action spider-verse like that much just kind of already hinted at even by kevin feige like that their ultimate goal is to have as many spider-men on screen at once so you can sell the movie and it's kind of like your avengers spider-man film if that makes sense you know um can this work what what, what do you think how, how do you guys feel about this one i, I mean it works in animated it does work very well in animated. Um, I can actually see it working only if Sony and Marvel are doing it together. Um, we are already going to be kind of seeing this Spider-Verse, or not Spider-Verse, Venom-Verse, I should say, uh, try to be in development, and that's just solely Sony. Um, but we can potentially see a really good turnout if both companies are actually going to do it together. I feel like that's going to be the better way that it works. So I think it is going to have to be both. Because Deadline was saying something like he's now essentially like a shared details mm -hmm. universe. So like if one person, like say if Sony wants him, like for Venom Two or Venom Three, he can he has to go over there and you know they can reference the blip or the snap or Tony Stark or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then of course if Marvel wants, him, we can go over there. So it's like, I think they're going to have to work. I don't think there's any way they can. Like, yeah. Um. I. To, to me, it's like the reason Spider Verse worked as an animated film was of the unique aesthetic style, mm -hmm. and you know, clearly the art style lent itself towards that. And Sony was largely hands off of that film, like they let the people, creative minds of it, Lord and Miller, actually just go to town on it because they were focusing on emoji. So, my reluctance always goes to Sony side of things because when Sony starts to meddle that's when things start to fall apart. Now, they are trying to fix it behind the scenes, so mm -hmm. my hope is that maybe down the road, if they get to the live-action Spider-Verse, which clearly they will, that maybe Kevin Feige can have some input, like, you know, well, oversee I'm it. Just, I'm just wondering, like, who are they going to pick to be in the movie if it, if it does come down the line? I Obviously. mean, they'll do Miles. That's, mm. that's an easy no-brainer one. Um, that, that one's kind of weird because... They already have. They already technically have one yeah. in the MCU. Well, they, they just make it the same one. No. Yeah. 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 They get it Spider Verse. It's like you know, there was how many Peter Parkers in the animated movie? No. Yeah. You could have more than one Miles. So. Yeah, you can have Miles. You're obviously gonna have Silk. You're definitely. You can't not have Ghost Spider in it. Mm -hmm. um, Noir is an extremely popular one. I don't. So see... they'll they'll do Jessica Drew. As well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I could definitely see them bringing, if they are going to be in a collaboration with Marvel, they're going to bring um, Donald Glover back and make him Prowler. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Nicholas Cage better be, better be noir. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, <laughs> he's. <st> you know <laughs> what? That would actually work, though. Like, Nicholas Cage needs that one film that puts him back in the spotlight. And if you brought him back as a live action noir, I think people would eat that up, honestly. But like, he's uh, well, yeah. uh, unless he's like towards the end of his career, I can see that because Dude, his career's been over for ten years. Are yeah, you talking about noir? <laughs> I'm talking about noir, noir. Okay, so just like oh, Nicolas Cage, like twenty years. Yeah, because <laughs> um, in noir, he is still technically on the younger side mm -hmm. of it. Um, 
obviously age that up. And I would like to have the Parkers and the Spiders in different age ranges if they could do that. Give us, like, if you're going to give us Noir, hey, why not have it just be Nicolas Cage? You can potentially bring the people who did the voice acting over and put some of them in suits. Oh, but that would be a tricky one because Haley Steinfeld is being looked at for Kate Bishop. Right, yeah. Oh, that, that is, is true. Which, can again... Can we talk <laughs> I mean, well, you could get Maguire for, like, Peter B. Parker. You whatever. could. <laughs> like, it's perfect. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and obviously they'd get Andrew Garfield back too. I like, would rather have Garfield back than McGuire. I'll be real with you can, guys. Can we get um, what's his face? He did the uh, blonde Spider Man. I can't think of his name. Oh, Jake Johnson. Chris. No, Chris. Oh, Chris Pine. Yes, the one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He was great. In that opening, he was so. amazing. Oh, honestly, he would be so good as that too. Like live action, older. I know you and I have talked about it. Let's also get the. Uh, mech so you'll have penny parker yes, but also yes. get the Spiderman. actual spiderman and needs... him and his giant mech he he needs to appear somewhere i think I, I think you know sony sees this as their avengers team up which yeah yeah it would yeah. be and i think kevin feige the way he's talking about it and the way he seems optimistic i think he definitely has a hand in on what's going to be happening because they're working with the same spider-man so mm -hmm. I, I feel like he is going to be to a degree like executive producing that more so than you know like some other films where he executive produced like tasm 2 but they gave him a script and they rejected all his ideas like yep. you know i think yeah. he'll have more input on this one which uh, if we do penny parker again though can we get like the actual robot she has not the little cutesy toy one she had <laughs> oh yeah they could probably I, give I, I, you I, multiple <laughs> Can we not have the inheritors? Because I really don't like them. Oh, you know they'll do the inheritors. No, please no. Do for it's horrible. Man. Do you yeah. think the villain they go with Morlin and he's actually eating spider yeah. totems? Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Because Abby Arad will want his edgy character in there. That's like, oh, I'm edgy. They're gonna put <laughs> twenty ninety nine in there. Huh? You you could make Morlin and inheritors work. I reckon. You could. You could. Can we have all the iterations of Black Cat? Sure. Just. Her in all of their universes. I mean, that would be something to play around with. You could see different yeah. versions of, you know, like MJ and Gwen snapping away. and One Gwen being alive, one Gwen being mm. dead. Oh, the, the, the thing I will say, though, what I never want to see again in any Spider-Man is his web forming a little hand as it tries to catch anything. <laughs> that was disgusting and absolutely ruined Tasm 2. That was poetic and you know it was. No, that was true. That still haunts me. Like, it was creepy. Like, there's moments where I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, there's things I think about that creep me out, like Hereditary, Baba Yaga, and that little hand from Tasm 2's <laughs> web, okay? Those three go hand in hand, so. Literally. Ha <laughs> ha, but a chew. Oh, I didn't even. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I should have shut myself up before that one. Um, so, yeah. Strong hand. Uh, live action Spider Verse. Can it work? Yes, but. We have to see how they're going to proceed. I think Venom 2 will be more telling of what their universe is. Because I feel Venom 2 has already a better team behind it. So I feel like Venom 2 could potentially be this weird soft reboot. It's a, oh, yeah. it's a continuation, but they're going to change some aspects so that it'll actually fit I mean, more in I the MCU. Kind of universe. Suicide Squad. Yeah. yeah. I talked that's to someone same. directly that was involved with both, and he said that's exactly what's happening with Venom so, 2, is it's a so, pseudo-soft reboot. So. so Venom is going to finally have the spider's insignia on his chest? Well, once he meets Spider-Man. I mean... Can um, we still at least have the, the lobster tank? Can we just allow Tom Hardy to do a little bit of his, like, um, whatever that, he was that, doing? That, 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 can, no. that can stay. That, that, can, that, no, that can stay no. away. <laughs> this time, it won't be a lobster tank. It'll be like a... Shark I tank. Don't know, shark tank. Shark. Sure. He'll, he'll be he'll be in the shark tank, and then the symbiote comes out and bites the sh head shark. Shark head. Or, or you can see him just gorging on a whole bunch of chocolate bars. Sure. Yes. Well, I mean, the lobster was chocolate, so like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there we go. Spider Verse. This one was requested by a few people and also an email. So um, the Disney and the Monopoly perception. Uh. Um. <sighs> Let's just start off by saying the obvious. You can't have a monopoly if you literally put out the least amount of films per year. Yeah. That I, doesn't I, work. I have told so many people this because 
a lot of people will come up to me um, in Taekwondo and just in the outside world and they're just like, oh, why is there so many Disney movies, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, have you ever actually counted how many Disney properties there are and then counted how many Warner Brothers or Universal properties there are? They're like, no. I'm like, there's about three times more on one company and about four to five times more. And that's on a more. low year. Like, yep. on a typical was, year, it's like four to one almost. And I was say, what was it in 2018? Wasn't it like 14 Disney movies to like 50-odd Warner Brothers movies? Yep. yep. So and, like... <laughs> and a lot of people are like, well, where are all these movies? I'm like, exactly. They're well, movies so, you decided so, not to go and see well, because they're not blockbusters. <sighs> So far, like, just to um, drive the point, is in 2019, so far, Disney's only put out about seven movies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And here's what gets me. The people complaining about it are the same people that will go see these films. They outright see the Disney films. And when you ask them, I'm like, I can talk to these people being like, oh, so what'd you think of Midsummer? They're like, I didn't see it. What'd you think of Shazam? I didn't see it. What'd you think of I didn't see it? I'm like, so you're literally complaining about the Monopoly but you're not seeing the stuff that falls into the other studios that would make them make more content. It's not Disney's fault they put out seven films this year and six have been global box office hits because you're paying to see them. So you can't accuse them of being a monopoly but only support their content. Yeah. Like, it Wait, what was the seventh one that wasn't a hit? Dumbo. Oh, I forgot Dumbo. Only one. Yeah. Everything yeah. else has been a hit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And mind you, like, we loved Dumbo. I thought it was great. And uh, uh, and that's the biggest thing, is, like, Disney makes quality over quantity. And that's the biggest, like, thing that a lot of people don't understand. The reason why everyone's mind is, like, they're a monopoly is because that's all people talk about is the quality of their films. Look at Medea. I think Medea is on, like, 800th film. There's so many. And it was, like... Nobody talks about it, but it came out. I think two or three of them came out last year. Like, for example, Warner Brothers this year, to date, has released 27 films. That's nuts. Like, there's a lot of stuff they're releasing. And again, there's a lot more content coming out. But I think the perception of Disney Monopoly has been heavily pushed by media to the point where people just squawk it out there mm -hmm. without ever it, even looking at the facts. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it goes, what are you going to go see or buy or whatever? An unproven mm -hmm. brand or something that's been proven and people actually like. Right. And to compare this one to something else that, are, you know, I think a lot of our listeners will understand, video games. Do you know why Nintendo always manages to sell a huge amount of Zelda and Mario, and the likes, it's because they're proven quality, and they know every couple years they can release it, and even if they have the least amount of original games, they will make a huge profit because people trust that brand. Same with PlayStation. Like, it's it's just how it works. You can't expect people to be like, I will go watch a random new movie, but I don't know if I'll like it or not. Like, you have to just take your dollar and vote for what you want more content of, you know? Like, it's... It's easy to blame Disney, but I get it. Like, yes, they have Star Wars. Yeah. Yes, they have Marvel. And, and in fairness, like, yes, you know, they they own they own Fox now, so their yep. like, their market share is essentially a third mm -hmm. of everything. But you know, there's still four other major studios at least putting a ton of movies out a year. So, and also everything that Fox has released in the last year and a half, besides one film, has bombed. So. Yeah. And their only like last big victory was Deadpool two, so. And even then, they had to make another cut to get one right. Out. Um, the, so the, you know, the whole reason Fox sold was because they couldn't maintain it. And now you're even seeing like, Universal and everybody they're looking to expand their portfolio, and everybody's buying up other stations and other properties, and things are changing. So, and I think the whole monopoly thing is just kind of at like. It's not warranted for anybody. It, no, like, it's weird, especially when you've got like AT and T over there, like owning way more than Disney. Yeah, so, well, it's like yeah, it was, Universal it. even had twenty-seven movies come yeah. out this yeah. year. Yeah, it's just it's it's funny because people like what I said before, people forget that they had Batman and Harry Potter selling you smartphones, and that's not a monopoly. Mm. Right, like, and I mean Warner Brothers, half the United States you get your internet through Warner Brothers AT&T. 
Yep. The other half through Universal Comcast. So, like, you want to talk about Monopoly? They're controlling your info. Like, they're especially when you know, like, isn't there the whole thing like you can't distribute your own stuff or something like that in America? Yeah. So you know, not only is Warner Brothers got the internet service to give people, they're about to have a streaming service. Uh huh. So, like, that's far more Monopoly than anything Disney has. Unless yeah. Disney suddenly just launched into the... Which, to be fair, they would have had an internet service in Europe if they got Sky, but they didn't. So, mm, no. Yeah. So it's a, it's a weird... I don't think there's a monopoly. I think there is a, a lack of knowledge and information by people who just read it online and then spew it out there, right? Like It's the typical, you know, success breeds contempt. It and does, it, yeah. It, contempt will breed whatever narrative people want. Yep. People have chosen the Monopoly narrative because they heard one person say it online. And mm -hmm. there we go. Yep. Exactly. So hopefully that fills you in on that. Um, that's just kind of a, how it goes. And next up, we're going to talk about the streaming wars that are starting at the end of this year and really going into next year, which is really going to be big. You're going to have DC Universe, HBO Max, that's the big ones people care about, versus Disney Plus and Marvel TV side of things. Obviously for comic books, that's the two biggest ones. Um... And kind of what is going to be the future of both of these? Now, I think it's clear DC Universe will remain, but their stuff is also going to get offloaded on HBO Max to, yeah. you know. So far, we only know one show making it over there, so we don't know yeah. if say, like, Titans is going to make it. I don't know if that will. I think eventually it will, but they want I don't to... even see that show lasting, to be honest. No. Um, yeah, well, the DC Universe is in an interesting position because coming out a year before HBO Max is weird. Like, yep, yep. And it felt like an infrastructure test. It, oh, really? definitely. It was a beta Especially test. Just, like how their, con like, their content plan was. And it's like, yeah, you know, here's a thing for the like your first year. It's like, well, where's year two? Uh-huh. You know, yep, exactly. There's, there's, there's nothing like, where's... So we didn't think that far. Yeah. No, they, they clearly didn't. No. And I, I don't see that, that thing lasting. I honest. think... Honestly, they're just gonna. It'll last through like Star Girl and maybe Doom Patrol season two. But my feeling is Doom Patrol season two, that will drop on DC Universe day and date with HBO Max. And after that, they'll announce your Universe account will just roll over into HBO Max. They'll grandfather yeah, yeah. you in for a few rest of your contract, and then you just gotta up that up because yeah. it's. Look, as much as I love DC Universe, and I really do. Well, you know, we've been reviewing Titans, and I'm really loving it. It's not a sustainable niche app no. that can survive. It, it's no. not. I'm sorry to say that, but you can't survive off just a mega hardcore DC fans. Like, that's not enough. Yeah, You have to be able to roll it in. And it's kind of like what Marvel TV and Disney are doing. Like, it's not that Disney and Marvel are going to have two separate streaming services. Everything will be under Disney Plus. And that's what they have to do when it comes to DC Universe with HBO Max. Just put it all under one umbrella, make it all in one app, and just make a little subsection. Right. Kind of like you do the kids section on Netflix. Well, you press kids. Here you go. They got that for Disney Plus. You click Star Wars, everything Star Wars. You click Marvel, everything Marvel. Like yep. HBO Max is going to roll out the same thing because it just feels like that that's the nature of it. Like That's the way they got to go. And I like... I'm I'm getting HBO Max because oh, yeah. the only like, you know, I'm like, getting HBO Max for one thing, one thing only, and that's the Boondocks. <laughs> oh yeah, they did announce that. That's a lot of money to pay for the Boondocks. So. <laughs> yep. It's like fifteen dollars a month. That's I mean, nice. I'm getting it for pretty much like uh, I think the Dune TV series, the Sisterhood one. I'm gonna watch that because it's Dune. You um, also love documentaries, and HBO is. I love huge documentaries. So, with, uh, yeah. Documentaries. Like there is a value there, and. If you look at them and how they're moving forward with their content output versus Disney, you can draw some parallels, but then Disney is also going to be dropping so much money on their original content because Disney is still going to put out 10 to 12 films a year in theaters, but they're literally going to like pretty much storm Disney Plus. The projection and the announcement was like, like close to 100 pieces of original content a year. In the next five years like that's their goal so you know you're looking at a huge output of disney stuff because they realize that streaming is the future because tv's kind of dead and it really is too like if you stop and you ask people ask people about commercials that's like the biggest <sighs> indicator and people are gonna be like 
back in the day, like I remember as a kid, you used to talk about all the funny commercials you would see just because they were funny and they did something different. And nowadays you sit there and you ask about a commercial and people are like, oh, wait, that like annoying thing that after three seconds I was able to click next. It's like, right. no, 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 an actual TV. You, commercial. you say that um, I was wa I was watching TV with my dad the other day and I forgot about the commercials because I was mm -hmm. wondering why the um, well, I think we were watching ESPN. I was wondering why they went to a break and they didn't come back real quick. And I'm, all, I'm like, oh wait, there's commercials. I didn't, you know, didn't wonder that they're, that they're still going about with right. these things. Because here's the thing: it, like, is TV actually dead? Uh, is that actually like, or is it just the commercials aren't good? So uh, here's it's, how it's, it's really. I think it's like it's really weird because now, especially for cable companies, they because most people want just the internet package, but they bundle it with TV and right. phone to get to get the numbers up. Because if they don't, then that's when certain yeah, things like i mean it's gonna say so, it's not you know like say when game of thrones was out you know yeah. if tv was like really dead no one would be talking about that well the Th game that of... was like a huge like, sure I mean, like game of thrones might be an outlier at the minute because you know that thing was huge right but like when it... you know people still talked about it every week yeah but uh, <laughs> but um, but i think i think with game of thrones and some other stuff they, they also you can also watch it on other things besides, i mean that's also like back in the day with the sopranos like you had to pay for HBO back in the day, yep. and it was expensive to pay like 20. 15, 20 extra bucks like fifteen years ago for HBO. But people did it for Sopranos. I think there are a few of those outliers like The Wire as well. But um, from what I've noticed about TV is if you look at the main big stations like your ABC, your NBC, your CBS, you know the three big ones, their numbers are down across the board year after year. But if you look at the same shows and how they do on digital distribution and streaming, their numbers would be comparable to what they were years ago. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there is a shift, but there's always this um, chart you can look at, Rural America, which gives you a good idea of where in the U.S. you are you don't even get high speed. They still do like 56K modems and like satellite, mm -hmm. and that's majority of the United States. Yeah. So the big cities and like the little outskirt towns, yeah, we get high speed internet, but you go maybe 10 minutes out, they're done. Like they can't get it. So they're yeah. still surviving yeah. on the cord, you know? So it's a weird yeah, perception. Yeah, because there's like multiple um, indications of this, even on Reddit, where some people said they have a friend that lives out in the boonies and they can't really get any internet connection. So they have to send out like a thumb drive or an external hard drive to download <laughs> oh, yeah. stuff. And they then, have to catch the pigeon and train it. Like... No, yeah, they, basically, they basically have to mail their drives to their friends to get stuff downloaded. Well, and it, when it comes to like here in Vermont, we are that way. Literally, where where we live is where you can get the highest speed internet. You go thirty minutes out, and you're in an, another area called Underhill. Underhill is literally in the woods, mm -hmm. and they have some high speed. And then if you keep going further out, there's places that actually don't even have cable. The only way they can get internet or any TV service is through a dish still yeah. because they won't pay to have those cable lines all the way out there. And that's actually a lot of different places in the United States because there's still a lot of untapped rural areas here. But when it comes to a lot of the shows, they're talking about the big cities, all of these massive places that have internet access and they have cell phones and things like that that are available at the higher speeds. And that's where a lot of people are watching their content. I, You sit there and you talk to average 20s to 30 year old people right now and they're going to sit there and tell you, I only have my phone or I only have oh, yeah. internet and they pay for the very specific streaming services that they want. Also, ABC, NBC, and CBS were the first three streaming services out there. Then HBO came out after that. So you can actually purchase HBO now without having a TV package mm -hmm. and be able to do it all streaming. So that's where a lot of those numbers are also coming from. Changing marketplace, changing landscape, I think is the best way to look at it. And I think that's what's happening with both. Um, it's going to be interesting. I suppose to see it, it could goes. depend on your definition of what TV is. Exactly that uh, too. Is, t is TV watching the box or is TV the show? Right. Exactly. Yep. Like, and now that's even getting changed up because, like, you look at Disney Plus. 
Mandalorian is a legit a long film. Like yep. it's shot true, that way. True. It's like so the perception is changing, but um it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I think in about two to three years the conversation will be way different on yeah, T V. Because uh, if you want the definition of TV now, it went from actual the TV box to the PC and the uh, right. And ac well, actually, I was just about to say that our little in the high school generation, they say I'm watching TV. They're not. They're actually watching it all on their phones. That no, is TV don't. to them. Yeah, kids these days. Like I talk to some of my little little cousins, and they're like, "Uh, we watch stuff on this little thing." I'm just like, "Oh." You don't even like put it Bloody up on the animals. <laughs> right. Like I don't need, I don't get it. Today I finished watching a movie while doing cardio on my phone and I felt disgusting. I'm gonna go take a shower yeah, after. Yeah. It was it's gross. I do it on the iPad. I don't know. Look, I was, it was kickboxer vengeance or whatever, so you don't really need to pay attention. Dave Batista just getting kicked in the <laughs> chest over and over. <laughs> I thought you'd be watching like Bloodsport or something. Well, I watched that. Yeah, that's on my list though. I downloaded it, so that'll be soon. But yeah, T V um We'll talk more about the streaming services next year because um, there'll be an interesting conversation to be had. More people wanted to know, it isn't now more or less clear that the DCEU is rebooting? Like, just... Oh, yeah. Like... I... I don't know if it's rebooting per se. Mm -hmm. I think it's splitting itself into different chunks. Yeah. I feel like it's soft rebooting itself. And, like, Aquaman yeah. was the the good proof of that. And then they even sat there and they stated Wonder Woman's going to be doing the same thing. Yeah. Shazam was its own thing. Like, it, yeah. it's a soft reboot. Yeah, because um, it, it all depends. Because even with, like, Shazam, you had Batman and Superman stuff in yeah. the show. And that doesn't correlate with what happened before, so. Right. And I, the Batman and Superman are the toys that you can actually just go to the store in right now right. and go and get. And you also had Batman the Animated Series toys in there as well. So it's like, it's a weird thing. Um, I think it's not a clean cut reboot, but it's not going to surprise me that, you know, the new Batman... Somewhere down the road, there's going to be a new Superman and stuff. And I'm not going to be surprised if, in a couple years, we get our first DCEU like branded TV series as well. That's kind of part of that continuity, whatever the DCEU is. Because I, I don't know what's happening with The Flash. Ezra Miller keeps saying it's happening, but I mean... Uh, Ezra Miller is <laughs> doing Elf commercials. Elf is a makeup brand, just to let you guys all know. Oh. That's where he is right now, and he's like... Doing a lot of that and doing a lot of like his own thing, I think he's just contractually obligated to say, yeah, it's still happening. Well, they finally got a director, Andrew Machete from um. Oh, it. They finally got another director. An okay, so like the sixth director this decade. So the, okay, you, uh, to, to, to correct myself. Don't spread misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> the other five got lost in the speed force there. Um, which again, I have optimism, and my guess is going to be that The Flash will be that one film that kind of reboots it and explains it, because I think that movie needs to do it. Like, it's... It, he could be the one who actually causes it, just like he does on TV yeah, every just, season. Just do that. Like, that's all you have to do. So, I think for right now, I don't think DC even knows what they are. Is that fair to say? Like, I mean, probably, but, uh, you know, if you look at it like... You know... Aquaman and Wonder Woman, they're in the same universe. Uh -huh. Shazam's got to be in the same one. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got a mini DCU there anyway. You know, Suicide Squad and the Suicide Squad are still connected to each other, which are still connected to the other three. Yeah. So, you know, is it really kind of moving away from anything? I mean, the only thing we don't know really is where the Batman's going to lie. Oh, that that is standalone as far as the eye can see. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way yeah. that's... I mean, it would be kind of weird, though, if, like, at the end of The Batman, he's sitting in a cave, and then Diana walks, and she's like, oh, hi, Bruce, and it's like, what? Like, <laughs> you know, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah. Mitch, I can't believe you forgot about Joker. I mean, Joker's standalone. Like, well, no, that's no. 100%, like, yeah. standalone. <laughs> also, that's society, and society's not part of a movie, so... Oh. <laughs> well, Metropolis has a society, <laughs> Mitch. <laughs> Acknowledge society in yeah, Metropolis. Yeah, but it's not the society. Okay, okay. It's well, a society. You have to put the word the in front of I it to differentiate. It's hard to talk about DC as a 
Co universe theory. because they've never even acknowledged it as such a thing. They've always kind of been like, yeah, we're we're doing a thing, but they've never formally called it the DCEU. They've said that's what the yeah. fans called it, and like they had I think that... it was a THR report where they called it the DCEU. exactly, and then it just kind of took off. But mm -hmm. I think Warner Brothers, if they want to make this a thing, should just come out and do a Marvel style Disney reveal, being like, we're gonna commit to these projects. Here's the name. Mm -hmm. We'll explain it all down the road and go with it. But I think right now, if Batman doesn't make money, which he hasn't been making money, that's why he was recast and he's getting rebooted, that tells you that you can't be sure of what you're doing. Because no. Batman not making money is the most insane scenario they found themselves in. Like that's, that's... Which, that, that actually sets up a good question. What about the other ones? So like... Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, <laughs> New Gods, Supergirl, <laughs> and Batgirl. Where are they going to lie if they ever get made? Oh, boy. Well, with the fact that they have a new CEO, the Supergirl and Batwoman are probably going to be, like, or Batgirl, are going to be a little bit more pushed forward. Batgirl probably going to be on the hold just because of Wait till Reeves and finishes else. what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. yeah, but Supergirl can potentially go forward a lot faster. Uh, they can end the TV uh, show. Guys, how about the Nightwing movie? It's been in development for three years. I mean, it depends what we're, Reeves does. We're <laughs> yeah. finally going to get... The Rock in a Black Adam suit before that no, movie comes out. No, 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 no. I said no. before that movie comes the out. The Rock will. Yeah, and no, I'm saying no. No. <laughs> the Rock will never be Black Adam. <laughs> nope. You know, like, let, let's be honest here. The Rock has been cast since what, 2006, 2007 yeah. was Black Adam? Yep. And that movie hasn't gone anywhere. John Cena has been cast in the Suicide Squad for like a week. Yeah. And. His movie's already starting production, so... <laughs> no. that, that movie's you never can't go see him! It's, uh... uh apparently Gunn did. No. <laughs> apparently he did? It's yeah, because he got the five-knuckle shuffle. Oh. 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 Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing. So... <laughs> James Gunn, don't tweet about that. You'll get chased off Twitter again. <laughs> oh, God, you guys! <laughs> so, um... Yeah, uh... We can't talk about DCEU as a reboot because not even Warner Brothers knows because I don't think they have a solid idea beyond what they've announced. Uh, yeah. I, I'd say the best bet is it's in the same place it's always been. It's in a state of flux and it's just yep. whatever. It's, it's literally DCU from 2015 in the comics. Oh, not the Bat Bunny, no! <laughs> what, whatever's what? continuity is what you decided. Uh -huh. What about a Bat Bunny? The Bat Bunny Megazord, Shay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the DCU. When Gordon was Batman, like... <laughs> oh no. Type in DC slash the word U or just DC U. Okay, Y O U. And then, and then or Batman. Jim Gordon Batman. No. Yeah, yeah, that was that was what went. Remember that lasted like at least half a week and they were like the sales have tanked, revert, yeah, revert. Yeah. Wait, do we rebirth? And then, oh okay. Yep, it was a it was a bad scenario. It was uh, uh I don't know what they were doing, uh, but that's kind of how it is. See the Bat Bunny shit? <laughs> oh. What the heck? Yeah. So, yeah, oh, um, that's the state of the DC EU, as it was known because of the Hollywood Reporter and Never by DC. How long can Sony and Disney keep a Spider Man deal realistically going on flimsy terms, which they kind of are on because of, you know, Sony? Um, how does this well, proceed? Like I keep let, me, saying. let me answer your question with a question How long is a piece of string? <laughs> oh, okay. It all depends on how you cut it. Ah, yeah. oh. yeah. uh, I feel like it's it's going to keep going until Sony is purchased, which, <laughs> like I keep saying, five years. So, Sony has to keep doing it out of necessity, right? Because yep. they wouldn't have agreed upon that Disney deal had they not realized that they need them. So, let's... but that's the thing, like. You know, obviously Sony still wants to do it. Like Sony, oh, yeah. not like Rothman Sony, but like Sony Corporation. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it again. Yeah. So they they obviously see it as a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't kind of th like fret about it anymore. But uh. yeah, yeah. I I feel like they're going to continue. Um, they had to cave in. Obviously, Sony was like, "Fine, we'll do your twenty five twenty five deal," um, and. They got their way, and then now you can tell that Kevin Feige's got a little bit more of, like, he's got a finger, like, in the door right now. 
maybe a toe trying to make sure like things can go in a coherent way i think he's got his entire hat in the door oh <laughs> the hat is in oh my god oh. oh you know it's serious when he's got a new hat through the door <laughs> so like as sony executives the higher ups they're the ones who sat there and were like yes we need this deal because they can see a bigger picture they're not eating lead paint chips, as like Armin says. Like, <laughs> they're staying away from that, and they're drinking Earl Grey tea and being like, "Okay, let's let's talk sophisticated I, now." Here's the weird thing: um, Sony has been through a lot of CEOs and people shifting positions, and it's constantly yep. happening. As it, you know, more so frequently at Sony than a lot of other major studios, which is telling about their insecurities and futures and every time i mean in, to be in that yeah, defense that's more of a cultural thing i believe because it is like, yeah like, japan as a, like, as a whole like you know the, just to i'm going to do a, a, a joe here and bring the sports if you look at honda in formula one when they came back they were recycling through people like nuts when they were True. doing great yeah now that they're doing all right they kind of just level out a little bit so that's kind of how the japanese mm -hmm. tend to work over there but. it is and it's a weird one which obviously um a culture you know differences and how it's perceived but sony is more so interesting than a lot of other studios because they lack ip power and that's mm. really where they're at. And Sony is their biggest, like, you know, outlet is PlayStation. And their biggest IP is Spider-Man, which they only own the films to. You know, they don't own the other stuff because they have to sell that stuff because they were running out of money. So it, it's, it's an interesting one. And I think they'll keep doing the deal as long as it benefits Sony. So if the next yeah. Spider-Man makes 1.5 bill... Yeah, they're re-signing that same contract for a couple more appearances. But if it doesn't, they'll be like, well, I guess that didn't benefit us that much. So, okay, you know, back away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, it something surprises me. Like, in the world where these comic movies are taking off, like, they have arguably some of the biggest game IPs. Yep. Why aren't they focusing more on those? Exactly. Well, well Technically, they are. It's just that we haven't heard anything from PlayStation Productions. I was going to say, that's going to so be... They're not, so they're not really focusing on it, then. You haven't heard anything. Yeah. Like, they should be going all out with and this. And that's like, why also like, like, going to be the PlayStation that. production side. Because the PlayStation division is putting together their own studios and their own people to head it. So, and remember, PlayStation said that not all their franchises are going to PlayStation services. So... Like, they're going to be shopping, like, I don't know, let's say uh, Uncharted or, or like God of War, for example, or Twisted Metal. They're probably going to shop that to, like, Universal or someone, which, yeah. again, that synergy that exists between a lot of other studios doesn't exist between PlayStation and Sony Core, which is, again, it's such a weird disconnect because they're making, like, the Final Fantasy live-action TV series, but... Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, like, but that's not going to be on a Sony thing. Like, they're like, oh, we're going to find a good network for it. It's like, but uh, you have... Yeah. Oh. They, they, they don't own Final Fantasy, do they? No, they're taking it from Square's, like, leasing the license. Yeah, because yeah, I think it was back in the early, like, late 90s or early 200s. They, they stole back their stake in uh, Square Enix, mm. so... Or Square Soft, as it was known then. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a weird... I can definitely see them working with, say, for like Twisted Metal. Universal Studios is the reason why we have Fast and the Furious. You sit there and you put Fast and the Furious and Twisted Metal together. That's something that like, they can do. Like to me, it's like I look at the PlayStation brand, right? Why doesn't Sony, core Sony, walk over to PlayStation and be like, hey, how about we actually work together? Like the Order eighteen eighty six, while not the best game out there. That is literally built to be an amazing period piece TV series that everybody will be talking about. But well, why don't we go one step cheaper? Why isn't there a show set in The Last of Us? Universe? Right? Like, that would be you know, so, so much oh, cheaper. There's Walking Dead over there. Like, let's compete with that because we can. And the fact, though, if they sit there and they continue correctly with the story from Last of Us, you can blow freaking walking dead out of the I mean, water i don't think they even have to set it the same characters no just set it in that yeah. world with the early fireflies and the early outbreak and stuff like yeah again so fear the last of us is what we're saying yeah 
Existential, yeah. Fear the Last of Us. That's that's exactly what that actually that's what they should call it as well. Like just like I just don't get it. Um, I think Sony has to realize what's changing. That's going to depend on how long they work together. But mm. is Sony is a little backwards thinking. They're all they're like Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers yeah. is like, hey, you want to use Supergirl? Okay, you have to pay us a certain licensing fee per episode. They're literally paying themselves. I don't. I don't get it. But yeah, yeah. that's that that's Warner Brothers. That's I don't know. Like, it's an oh. interesting, crazy scenario to be don't, in. Don't forget, they're not uh, like they're not letting themselves use the thing that they themselves own. No. Yeah, right. It's like, oh, you won't do Suicide Squad. Well, that's tough. We're doing Suicide Squad. Oh. Yeah. Is really that is so weird. That's like basically kind of like how you and I are. Like, I work for you, you pay me, but I that's, spend my money right, and I turn around and I buy you gifts. That's how it works. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't get how these companies work, but like, what? with that in mind, um, I don't know. We'll figure out how Sony and Disney are going to keep this going. We'll know within the next two years. And that's a quick turnaround because we're going to have to know because that's when the next Spider-Man film will be out. Like, so... I mean, it, it won't be... In, it... It'd be more than two because you got the last appearance for Holland in the MCU, which I assume yeah. they'll confirm by that time where he's appearing. Yeah. Cause... It just depends which movie that you know they they could hold on for that as long as possible. <laughs> That's yeah. true. As well, like Phase Six of Holland's like fifty, and it's just like yeah, I'm doing it in <laughs> MCU. I'm back, and I look <laughs> I look as old as Tobey Maguire when he was trying to pass as a teenager. Look oh, at me, everybody. <laughs> Remember oh, that? Man. That was that was something. Um, wow, this podcast, we've taken like four jabs at Toby Maguire. That was a pretty good one. Uh, yep. Toby McCryer, make it a fifth. Oh, yeah. Toby McCryer, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, everybody, that has brought us to the end of this show. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this. We took some of the uh, members' questions from the uh, community tab over there. So, again, thank you, everybody who's a member there. Uh, you know, keep on posting. Suggestions comments whatever because you know we're we had fun like, with this yeah and we also had fun with this this we could also maybe i don't know you guys could fill in like a topic or two every week if it become, comes down to that then we don't have to scrape the bottom of the barrel Ooh. you guys i just pray nothing problems. drops for this week oh yeah if it does be, something yeah. emergency <laughs> but hey we'll get to that bridge when we get to it i guess probably